Harry and Meghan have been visiting Jamaica to watch the Bob Marley biopic uh, live uh, in that country. And while they were there, we found out a little bit about their future plans for making some new shows for Netflix. And joining me now is Rafe heidel Manke, royal commentator, who can tell us a little bit more about it. Um, we understand that they're working on multiple uh, forms for Netflix, some scripted, some unscripted. That word unscripted strikes fear into the heart of every royalist here in the UK. Does that mean we are about to see Harry and Meghan followed round by a fly on the wall documentary maker while they do interesting things like cut vegetables and change their children's nappies? And is that going to be passed off as entertainment? Yes, well, you may well ask that. And uh, I'm sure uh, people, especially in the royal household, will be wondering that very thing. I mean, Netflix's chief content officer is the person who's actually revealed that they're working on uh, not just unscripted things, I should say, also a movie and a TV show. But all of this is said to be in the very early stages of development. Now, very early stages of development in the media world is another way of saying Harry and Meghan have had an idea, but they've done absolutely nothing about it. Uh, we believe these shows are, go are going to be documentaries, but Harry's actually expressed an interest in doing a documentary in Africa, which I think will give uh, some uh, respite for the uh, royal family. And the film itself could be an adaptation of a very successful Canadian novel called Meet Me at the Lake, which uh, Megan has got the rights to. And there's also uh, rumours of a feminist prequel to Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, uh, where the focus uh, could be on Miss Havisham, who, of course, is the world's most famous jilted bride. But it's actually the timing of this announcement by Netflix that's the most interesting, I think, because it comes just two days after the media have been talking about troubled waters at Archwell, the Sussex's production company, which has just lost another key member of staff. You know, they've lost eight staff in total since arriving in California. And it comes after rumours that Netflix might not renew their £80 million deal and that the couple might actually make a deal with Paramount Pictures. And, of course, they were just in Jamaica for the... Uh, premiere of a Paramount Pictures film about Bob Marley. So this announcement is actually clearly designed, I think, to rebut all of those rumours and paint an image of harmony and productivity between Archwell and Netflix. Well, just to prepare us here in the United Kingdom, just to drill down on something you have said. Um, so just to be clear, Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, is going to write a prequel to a Charles Dickens novel, Great Expectations, probably one of the greatest living, well, greatest ever British authors, not living author, uh, after Shakespeare. Charles Dickens would probably be number two. She, with her great genius for English language and, and sort of prose, is going to write this prequel, and we're going to have a feminist picture about what Miss Havisham... Is that serious? I just want to know when it's coming on screen so I can uh, take all of the televisions out of my house and throw them out of the window and then remove them from the garden and put them in the bin. Is that really what she's planning to do? Well, let's, let's just say, look, given Prince Harry couldn't even write his own autobiography, I think the idea that <laughs> Megan's going to be the one authoring any feminist prequel to Great Expectations is, is perhaps a bit optimistic. Uh, I think perhaps it will obviously be written by somebody else and they'll simply be the production team producing it. But yes, they do have movie ambitions, uh, both with the adaptation of this of this other novel, Meet Me at the Lake, and this and this potential uh, feminist take on uh, Charles Dickens, of course, which, you know, is part of the course on, on the sort of programming they've been trying to actually pitch to Netflix. Of course, and the whole point here, of course, is whether Netflix is actually getting uh, mo uh, value for money in this deal with Harry and Meghan. They did one very successful documentary, a six-part series, Harry and Meghan, which was the, the best launch of any Netflix documentary. But since then, there are two subsequent documentaries, uh, Lives to Lead and uh, Heart of Invictus, weren't that popular. Netflix already dropped Meghan's animated series, Pearl, and uh, with Megan's deal due to expire next year, it remains to be seen whether Netflix actually will renew it or whether they'll go the same way as Spotify, which decided to uh, basically get rid of the couple because they only produced one series of a podcast. Uh, of basically, I think it was 12 hours were produced in, in one year or two and a half years. So whether we'll, we'll see anything beyond these 
fevered speculative ideas that they have is another thing because they haven't really delivered much on what they've thought about. Rafe, thank you so much for joining us here on Talk TV. Uh, Netflix will only pub put stuff online that will actually sell. I don't think it sounds like any of that is going to be worth tuning into. Stella, you were rolling your eyes, which, you, it, as we've been discussing the show, is a microaggression, potentially, against <laughs> Duchess of <laughs> Are you going to be tuning in for a, a feminist remake of the life story of Miss Havisham? It just really sounds really, really cringe. And I think what I... What people really hate, right, you're listening to this, and there are so many talented people out there who could be writing the most amazing films, the most amazing books, the most amazing stuff. And we, we all have to, to listen to and, and, and buy uh, the, the, the novels and the films and the, and the, and the, and the, and the produce of a, a celebrity who, who rose to fame because of the man he was married. And you know what? There is nothing feminist about that. There is nothing feminist about me consuming content just because it is made by an actress who is married to a very, very famous royal. And this is very disappointing for me as a woman, if I'm honest with you, because at, the, at, at first, when, when Meghan first arrived to the UK and she, and she got married to, to Prince Harry, I was all for her. Well, she was interesting where she, she first was, got yes, she, and, wasn't, she wasn't quite as preachy, was and she? Exactly, and I, and I really do agree that, that, that the media was very harsh on her. She was targeted. I do agree on that. But eventually, she's been trying to, 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 to make money out of her status as, a, as the biggest victim in the UK for the last, I don't know how many years. Well, but people are bored of this, and there is nothing inspirational about this. And it is really, really sad when you're looking to this woman who she had this amazing opportunity with her production company. She was given this massive contract to make her podcasts, and you have reports coming Absolutely. out saying yeah. saying that they're, 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 it's it's just because exactly, of the works. Uh, Stella, the work. Matthew, that was the that was the best best monologue we've had.